You've clicked on the video, you know what this is about, making thumbnails in Affinity Photo. Let's get into it. So making thumbnails is one of those things that's an afterthought for most people. And it's a shame because there's so much power in a good thumbnail. So today I'm going to take you through my process for how I make them using Affinity Photo. So in an ideal world, you would take a photo when you're shooting your video, but sometimes you may not get the chance to do that either because it slips your mind or because you just can't do it with the kind of content that you're shooting. Now thankfully, what we can do is take stills from our videos inside of DaVinci Resolve. So I'm going to quickly show you how to do that first. If you already know how to do that then skip ahead to this time frame here see try to save you time i know you're busy i know you're busy so first thing we need to do is we need to scrub through our timeline and find a point that we want to grab a still from so i'm quite happy with this point here i can see how this will come together as a thumbnail for the project so to grab it i'll jump into the color page and then from there i'm going to right click on the screen and go grab still now what this does is it saves it to our stills as you can see here. But for our purposes, we want to export this image. So what I'll do is I'll right click and go to export. And then from there, it'll let us save it, but we want to change it to PNG before we do that. And that's it, good to go, we've saved it. And now we can bring this into Affinity Photo. If you're unsure what Affinity Photo is, it's basically a like for like replacement for Photoshop. So in my Affinity Photo document, I'm going to set it to 1920 by 1080. Let's keep our DPI to about 72. The document unit has pixels, RGB, 8-bit and sRGB on the colour settings. And you know what, whilst we're at it, let's just create a new custom preset for this. Call it thumbnail and that'll save us time next time we're doing this. Now that creates a new document for us in Affinity Photo so we can now bring in our PNG that we created earlier as a base canvas for our thumbnail. And this is where the fun begins. Now, bit of advice, a good thing to do is to stop and take notice of the kind of videos that make you want to click on them. What kind of thumbnails grab your attention? Have a look through your YouTube feed and try and get a sense of what's gonna actually draw attention. So the first thing we've got to do with our image is maybe tidy it up a little bit. There's nothing really wrong with this image. It's got some good saturation, good contrast. All I want to do is brighten up around the areas here that are not snow and just try to balance the image out a little bit. And for that, I'm going to use the selection tool. This works the exact same way if you've ever used Photoshop selection tool. It's this little guy here. And this lets me make a selection from my image that I can then either cut, mask or make adjustments to. So I'm just going to click around here and start to select the sky and the snow border and basically anything that is not snow here. We need to make sure that our image is rasterized. This is really important because Affinity Photo works with raster graphics. So I'm going to right click this layer and hit rasterize and that'll let us access the develop persona to make our changes. If you're unsure what the different personas are in Affinity Photo, please don't worry, they're not hard to get to grips with. Affinity just basically likes to break things up into different workflows for different tasks. With our image selected in the layers panel, I'm just gonna go into the develop persona and start adjusting the exposure here on the basic adjustments tab. And this looks fine to me, so I'll hit develop now and then that takes us back into our normal photo persona. And then I can hit command D to deselect our selection. Now thumbnail doesn't always have to have text on it. If you look at the likes of Mr. Beast thumbnails, for example, they almost never have any text on them. And that's obviously working really well for him. <laughs> I like using text on a thumbnail, but I always try and keep it to a minimum two to three words max. And in this instance, I want to do something quite cool here. I want to have our little snowboarder guy here overlapping our text a little bit, just to give it a sort of 3D look. So in order to do this, I'm obviously going to have to cut him out in some way and have him on a separate layer. So again, I'm going to use our little selection tool here. I'm going to really carefully start to cut him out. Now you can resize your brush just using the open and close square bracket buttons. And this tool works really well most of the time. If you're making selections on an image that's got some really good contrast, just like this one. But sometimes we need to refine things a bit better. And if we're holding Alt whilst we click, we can deselect something if we've got it wrong. But what's even better than that is if we jump up here and hit refine, we could start to really nail down what we want to select here. This red overlay is everything that's not part of the image. So that's everything that's been cut out of the image. 
Now, this new box pops up with a bunch of new options for us. The main part that we want to pay attention to is these toggles here, matte, foreground and background specifically. So matte is a good tool for using on things like hair or fingers, really anything that's hard to select. It will intelligently work out what needs to be selected for us. Foreground and background on the other hand are pretty self-explanatory. If I click on the foreground it's going to let me select the foreground and if I click on background it's going to let me cut it out and select the background again. So I'm happy with my selection here and I'm going to hit apply. Now that's defined my selection so if I go up to the layers panel and select my image again and go Command C for copy and then Command V for paste, it'll create a brand new layer with my selection cut out. Now because we only want to use a few words here, I'm going to use the Art Text tool. This gives us a bit more control with the individual words as opposed to the Text Box tool which is better for controlling larger paragraphs in a design. Now we do want something that grabs attention but isn't clickbaity. So for this, I'm just going to add the words, this was intense. Now, I can't tell you what font you should use, but I personally think you want something that's bold and easily readable. So a sans serif font like Helvetica is an easy option or Poppins might work for you. That's what I'm going to use here, Poppins Black. Side note here, if you're looking for somewhere to download some really decent fonts that are free, I'd highly recommend Daft Font. I've left a link in the description for you if you fancy checking that out. So the last thing we're going to do here is provide a bit more contrast and colour for our text and for our snowboarder. Those are the two things I want to draw the viewer's eye to. So there are lots of different ways to do this. So I might, for example, jump back into the develop persona and use this little tool here, the overlay gradient tool. And this lets us make adjustments that are gradient overlaid in our image. So I'll just reduce the exposure here and you can see that it applies it gradually as we've selected. What I personally like to do is add a bit more colour in though. I'm a massive fan of bright vivid colours in case you haven't noticed. So first I'm going to create a new rectangle that covers the entire canvas and then bring this down to the bottom layer. Now don't worry, it will become clear why I'm doing that in a minute. Then I'm going to select my background layer here and hit new mask. And the mask layer will pop up underneath. If you don't know what a mask is, it's basically like a cutout on your image. We use white and black to tell us which parts of the image we want to see and which parts we don't. So if we use the gradient color tool here and go from white to black, whilst having our mask selected, it will apply a gradual transparency to the image. And this will bring through our color in the background. Then we can adjust the color as we see fit, but I kind of like this as it is. So once you've got your thumbnail ready, it's time to export it. So go to File, Export, and make sure you select JPEG. Go to about 80 to 95% quality to get a little bit of compression going on here. Now YouTube does have a file size limit. It's two megabytes, which isn't massive. So you do want to apply a little bit of compression to your image just to make sure that you're meeting that file size requirement. So hopefully you can use a bunch of these techniques to try and bring your own thumbnails to life. And there you have it. I'll see you in the next one.